I mean, all the chicky babes are gonna come for you. I'm, this is kicking it already. <coughs> That's the title of this episode, Opt Out. Yeah. No, it's a terrible title for an episode. <laughs> Welcome to Six Beers of Politics. I'm Greg. My name is Pep. Our challenge is to drink six beers while talking about politics and still try to make sense. And when we finish our six beers, we will stop talking about politics, which is exactly what we recommend everyone do at home. Cheers. So God knows. So GDPR yeah. has gone. As we shoot, GDPR went into effect last week. The, the general data <clears throat> protection regulation. So now we're all data subjects according to this law. What does that mean even? In the context of data protection, you're a subject. You're a data subject, which just makes me think like... Like the subjects of the kingdom of data? Subject of the realm. Welcome to the kingdom data. of data. For example, I use MailChimp for my newsletter. I, I, I sent out my MailChimp that said, I'm Greg Shapiro and I am a spammer. I, I, some of the emails I get say click here and you know re-permission me, and some don't say that. Right. So either somebody is breaking the rules right. or somebody's wasting their time. Uh, you can't just say, oh, if you want to keep reading this newsletter, then you know click here to make this box go away, and you automatically uh, approve. Like that. That's that's that, that's the only no no. It can't be like terms and agreements, basically. I. Okay, well, that's, <laughs> that's like, a, oh, fine. I accept. That's a that's a good distinction. It's opt in versus opt out. That's yeah. The classic question, right? Yeah. It's like consent, actually. It's like consent with your date. Yeah. You know, because fellas prefer opt out, which is they just press their luck, and then and then someone has to say, and me no. Right. But but you know, consent means consent. Like Aziz Ansari, he was in an opt out situation. Uh, yeah. Like he you could have. Like, I'm just gonna act like you're right. giving consent until right. you tell me no. Right. Tinder now has to have a written contract when you swipe right. I really, is that, that's, there's no truth to that, is there? Maybe. That's where we're going. Ah, that I just was always such a scaredy cat when I was dating that I would always be a big like, hey, is this cool, is this cool, is yeah. this cool? It turns out I was sensitive before my time. <laughs> not, a, not a coward. Yeah. Sensitive before my time. Not even sensitive. Respectful. Yeah. That's what it is, respectful. Uh, for a long time, uh, I don't think I realized that sex could be <laughs> pleasurable for a woman. It was just, yeah, it's well, something me, awful that women have to go through. And uh, for, for me, I didn't know that it could be pleasurable for a woman because usually when I was having sex, there were no women present. <laughs> there were no, there were, there were no men present either. It was really just uh, a private occasion. You know, I, I think as a, as someone who's in the comedy business and does mm -hmm. a lot of performing. You get in the habit of, of doing like flirty things when you're performing, when you're talking to people. Mm -hmm. And I have realized that I'm now uh, of an age where it's all creepy. Like, no, there's nobody, there's no time where I do something flirty and the response is, oh, the response is always like, ew. Yeah. But, but isn't, there, isn't there a bit of flirtation in your performance? I guess not. Yeah, man. I remember one time we were doing a, we were doing our two-man show and then afterward, I remember these, Two women came up after the show, seeming to think, "Oh, this is the part where we hook up with the comedians." I mean, you guys you call us groupies or whatever. Like, we're ready to hook up with you guys. They were so drunk, and I guess we had that moment of looking at each other, like, "Well, this is something we've never discussed as a social contract. Right. This is not something we either of us would think is an <laughs> acceptable idea in any way." But I mean, we could. <laughs> right. I mean, we, that's, it's, nice, it's nice to know. We are, we are opt out at this point. We're opt they opted out. They were opt in. We opted out. <laughs> we opted out. We opted fucking out. That's the title of this episode, Opt Out. Yeah. No, it's a terrible title for an episode. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see the movie Hall Pass? No. Jason Sudeikis. Yeah. From Chicago is Jason Sudeikis. Yeah. So, blah, 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 hall pass, you know, you permission to, to hook up for whatever, three days. Ah, uh, hall pass. Or, or permission to, to, to cheat on your wife, basically. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, is a hall pass. Hey, I got a hall pass for my wife, so, you know, anything goes this weekend. And is the premise of the movie, post. Booyah, he's ahead. And, um, and our friend Andrew said, the funny premise to me of hall pass is the idea that a lot of middle-aged dudes have, which is, the only thing that's keeping me from hooking it up <laughs> with all these ladies is my bat, you know, my my ball and chain back home. If right. it wasn't for me being married, yeah. 
I'd be the gray-haired, balding, <laughs> pot-bellied ladies' man. Gift to the yeah. ladies. Yeah, yeah. How about the last time that we went out to the Dance Valley uh, Amsterdam Dance event, and we were a bunch of guys with some gray hair, just dancing, and we were surprised that all these young 20-year-old chicky babes kept coming up and like, hey. They, they just assumed we were there selling the drugs, and uh, one of them even gave us a look to say, why don't you have drugs? Why would you be here? Yeah, they asked us if we had pills to sell. Dancing. And they were, and then you're yeah. old. Yeah. Well, these <laughs> girls are young enough; they could be my babysitter. Oh, there's my babysitter. That was your favorite bit. Oh God, that's true. <laughs> I bumped into my babysitter once at a club. And by the way, my babysitter, her boyfriend, had the drug hookup. There is something though about the biology of it. When I was watching my first my first child being born. I got a. You really watched it? I was there. I was, yeah. But I was there when mine were born, but I didn't watch. Did you watch? Yeah, I watched. I mean, is, I, it, is it gross or cool? It was not a cesarean, so it was kind of cool. I had. You opted heard, in. You opted I, in. I opted in to watch. More traditionalists, you know, like, uh, sir, you can wait outside. You, no one wants this. Yeah, you know, so my, so my wife had a C section, uh -huh. and I remember thinking, Cause like they, they set it up so that there's like a cloth mm -hmm. and your wife's head is here and her, and her, my wife's head is here. I don't, I don't know where your wife was. Yeah. And then her belly is here and then the, they put up the cloth halfway through. Sure. And I thought to a myself- A modesty panel. A modesty panel. And I thought to myself, I'm a kind of a science guy. Mm. I'm gonna peek around at some point, take uh, a peek during the operation. Uh -huh. They probably don't want me to, but I'm gonna take a peek because I want to see it. Mm -hmm. And then for some reason I look down and I see blood on the floor mm. and I was like, yeah, I'm not looking. Mm. That's, not gonna, that's not gonna happen. So that was the opt out. I opted out. For I the, had, for the record, I don't think they wanted me to opt in, but I did no. opt out. Uh, I heard about the fontanelle and the soft spot on the baby's skull so that the skull, if necessary, can collapse to fit through the aperture. And, uh, and that is exactly what happened with my daughter, who emerged head first with a head the shape of a rugby ball, uh, American football. And then a little Conetti. The first thing is she, she from did. She from France. I, yeah, yeah. I it's thought. Oh, I, my baby's French. Uh, and the first thing my baby did. The first thing my daughter did when she entered the world was did a, 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 a cartoon style. You know, like when you're hit with a pan and your head takes the shape of the pan, and then you have to go and your head snaps back. And she. She did. Yeah, like. And I had a biological. A uh, message that just came from the universe watching my child being born and the message was you can die now uh, Your sperm has succeeded and fertilized the egg. Here's the offspring. You are no longer biologically necessary When it comes to life you are welcome to opt out. Yeah, I did not have that message I had the opposite message which is like okay, you know how you were thinking of quitting your job and Moving to fucking Tahiti and doing nothing? Mm. Nothing. You know how when you have, before you have kids and mm. everybody you know who has kids are like, oh, when are you gonna have kids? Uh, it's the best! Uh, my mother's like, I can't imagine a life without my children. Uh, and now that I have children, I'm like, that's funny because I imagine a life without my children all the time. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. All, and I don't really want it, He's, but yeah. I imagine it. Yeah. I, Welcome to Opt Out. Oh, okay, we're done. Oh, fuck. I mean, am I done? I'm done. I'm not sure when it will drop either. But uh, one thing's for sure, we'll both be playing Fortnite when it does. <laughs> That's how cool we are. <laughs>